welcome back to Office Hours here at the Professor's Kitchen where I sit down in my office with my cup of tea or coffee and patiently wait for my students to arrive. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh you're here. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the Professor's Kitchen. Today we are continuing our discussion about Black History Month with a little known person or lesser known person, I guess, in black history. In a moment, I will whisk myself into the kitchen to prepare my family recipe for gumbo. Now, this is not your traditional gumbo recipe. I prefer not to use a roux. Instead, mine is tomato-based. So if that's not something that you like, then fine. I've been told in the past that it's actually just fish and sausage soup, which I'm okay with that because I think it tastes good. But if you don't like that kind of thing, then you might not like this recipe. If you do like gumbo or you like trying new things and you would like to try this new recipe, then please stick around and check out the recipe. While I am cooking today, I am going to tell you a little story, a little backstory, I guess, about someone who is kind of, I feel like I grew up hearing about him, and I'll tell you more about my personal connection to him at the very end, but today's story is about Dr. Theodore Kenneth Lawless, otherwise known as Dr. T.K. Lawless, who was a dermatologist in Chicago. So. If you want to hear the story about Dr. Lawless and see my gumbo recipe, please stick around. Without further ado, let's get cooking. Dr. Theodore Kenneth Lawless was a Chicago-based, world-renowned dermatologist who specialized in successful treatments for syphilis, leprosy, and cancer. Due to his effort and skill, he amassed a small fortune that he used to give back to underprivileged and deserving communities, including black educational institutions such as Dillard and Roosevelt Universities, and most notably, $160,000 towards the construction of a dermatology wing at Bellison Hospital near Tel Aviv. Seven years later, he founded the Science Summer Camp for Gifted Children at Israel's Wiseman Institute. Dr. Lawless grew up in New Orleans, earned his A.B. at Talladega College, and went on to study medicine at the University of Kansas. He completed his M.D. at Northwestern in 1919 and also earned an M.S. in 1920. After studying dermatology at prestigious institutions in New York, Boston, Paris, and Vienna, Dr. Lawless returned to Chicago in 1924. He was one of the first faculty members to receive an Elizabeth Ward Research Fellowship at Northwestern, which allowed him to focus on finding a cure for leprosy and advancing treatments for leprosy, skin conditions, and syphilis. In 1936, while serving as a professor of dermatology and syphology at Northwestern University Medical School, he helped devise a new treatment for early syphilis known as electropyrexia, which involved the artificial raising of a patient's temperature followed by injections of therapeutic drugs. He also developed special treatments for skin damaged by arsenical preparations, widely used during the 1920s in the battle against syphilis, and was one of the first physicians to use radium in the treatment of cancer. He remained on the faculty at Northwestern for 16 years, during which time he helped to establish the university's first medical laboratories. Due to discrimination and segregation that continue to plague Chicago to this day, Lawless was prevented from renting an office on Chicago's famous loop. In 1937, after a series of frustrating and demeaning experiences on the north side of the city, he moved his practice south. He remained there for the next 44 years. In one account regarding the scope of Dr. Lawless's success, 
Chicago chemist Percy Julian recalled a visit to Lawless's office in 1951, stating, I have never in my life seen such a sight. A line of about 200 feet long extended from the door of his waiting rooms, which were full, to the street, sufferers waiting to be treated. More than 90% of them were white faces. According to Dr. Harold Thatcher, who took over Lawless's practice after his death, Lawless saw patients at all hours of the day, often without appointments. In the case of U.S. servicemen and others he felt could not afford to pay, Lawless provided his services for free. Despite Lawless's international reputation as a researcher and diagnostician, his tenure at Northwestern was marked by racial prejudice and discrimination. According to Dr. W. Montague Cobb, in a biography of Lawless published in the Journal of the National Medical Association, quote, he was merely tolerated and not embraced by the hospital he served. Moreover, Cobb suggested, Lawless's brilliance as a physician may have contributed to his downfall. Once, Cobb wrote, Lawless, quote, accidentally asked for his opinion on a case, correctly diagnosed the trouble, but unknowingly trod on sacred toes. A cool atmosphere developed, and presently, as an instructor in dermatology, he was assigned no students. Lawless was eventually named assistant to the chief of dermatology, but left the university in 1941 after failing to receive a promotion he felt he deserved. He used this as an opportunity to focus on his own private practice, which drew in people from all over the world. By the 1960s, he had become so successful that he, his name appeared on Ebony Magazine's list of America's 35 Negro Millionaires. Dr. Lawless received five honorary degrees and earned many awards for his philanthropy and work in medicine and business, most notably winning the Spingarn Medal, the NAACP's highest honor in 1954. In presenting Dr. Lawless with the 39th Spingham Medal of the NAACP in 1954, Dr. Buell Gallagher, president of the College of the City of New York, praised him, as quoted in the Chicago Sun-Times, for his notable contributions to the health, enlightenment, and welfare of his fellow citizens of all races, faiths, and classes. Lawless died in Michael Reese Hospital at the age of 78. As I mentioned in the intro, I grew up knowing about Dr. Lawless because we have a personal family connection to Dr. Lawless. My grandmother actually worked in his office on the south side of Chicago for much of the time that it existed there. And so I heard stories all the time about his philanthropy and just what an overall great guy that he was. A bit of a workaholic, but definitely... A really great guy and just an all-around good person so hopefully you learned something today about dr. lawless 
Thank you all for joining me again for this Black History Month series. This concludes the Black History Month series. So if you liked this video, if you liked this series, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and let me know. You can also subscribe to the channel for more videos. Just because the series is ending doesn't mean that the channel is going to stop. I'm going to continue posting videos. My cousin Marvin Alonzo and I are, have been posting over on our Instagram pages throughout every day. We've had a different post every day in Black History Month, so you can go back and review all of the posts that we've done over there if you want. I will leave the link to our Instagram pages in the description box below so you can check that out. And we will continue posting every day for Women's History Month, which is coming up in March. So look out for those posts starting in March and look out for new videos starting in March. Again, subscribe to the channel and feel free to share this with a friend if you was something that was interesting to you, if you enjoy this format, if you like seeing the cooking with paired with a person or someone um, kind of learning something, I guess, because that is really the whole point of the professor's kitchen is for you to learn a little something in kind of a fun way, I think. I think it's pretty fun. Again, growing up, I learned pretty much every life lesson in the kitchen. So this is my extension of not only my classroom, but also of my personality and my kitchen. I'm, I'm extending it to all of you. Thank you again for joining me here in the kitchen. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao for now.